So, you're in a course that requires you to make use of Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. Congratulations! Uh, this video is going to help you get a feel for what that room looks like. So you're going to get into Blackboard, however you normally do so. You might do it through the Blackboard mobile app, or you might do it through Blackboard itself or through Flashline. In this case, we're going to assume you indeed are going to go into Flashline. And once there, in the usual fashion, if you've been to Flashline before, you'll click on the Blackboard Learn icon at the top of the screen. This will take you into your class listing, and you'd find the course that you're looking for that has the Collaborate Room in it, and you would go to that class. Once in the class, you have to find the Collaborate Room itself. Uh, in our example, the instructor set it at the top of the uh, class menu but it might be in the Start Here folder, might be in some other folder that the instructor would have to let you know about. But in this case, we're just going to enter the room area from the tab Collaborate Ultra. So now at the Blackboard Collaborate session screen, you can see there are a couple different choices here. There's an unlocked course room, but because we are doing Collaborate from the student's perspective, and perhaps we've already been told by our instructor, we're going to go into the Collaborate Ultra from the student's perspective room by clicking on that. As we click on it, we are going to be able to join the session. And as we join the session, depending on what's going on in the room, we either get this screen, which is says, welcome, you're the only one in the room while you're wait. Check out the session menu to take a quick tour of Collaborate, which you can do. If others are in the room, then you'll see either their faces or in this case, their icons. It just depends on what that situation is as you come into the room. You wanna be sure that your microphone and camera are set up properly. Uh, you can do that in the settings panel. There are two ways to set up your camera and your mic. Either you can kick on, click on the collaborate panel button and then on the my settings icon, in which case you have the ability to set up the audio and video settings. Or alternatively, you can click on the My Status and Setting button and then on your name and it brings up this same settings area. Clicking on Set Up Your Camera and Microphone will allow you to find your default microphone. You may have more than one microphone to choose from and you want to be sure that you're choosing the one that you want to have sound. In this case, I can see that I've chosen the right one. I sound great, and so I'm all set. So my audio is working. And now I've clicked on the camera selection. Again, I might have multiple cameras available for myself. I just want to be sure that I have the right camera selected. And so now my video is working. Once I click on those, I can choose to either activate them or not. As you can see, you're you're good to go. When you're ready, select share audio and share video to start talking. So you would click either on the share audio or the share video. We would now wait for other folks to come into the classroom if indeed we were the first one into the room. So now others have joined us in the room. We might then, for example, hear from the instructor asking us to one at a time turn on our microphone and our camera introduce ourselves, then turn them off. Uh, with multiple people in the room, you can either select a grid view or a follow the speaker view. If we had five or more participants, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra may focus on the attendee who is speaking, so it might go to the speaker view. So let's go ahead and uh, follow the instructions we may have gotten. Uh, and one of the things it asked us to do is to turn on our mic, turn on our camera. Notice that when you go to share video, you do get a preview, so you can judge whether or not it's the image you want before you click on share. And you're now sharing your image, which you can see in this little monitor at the bottom left. You're sharing that image with other people. They are seeing that. And as you speak, they see you uh, either in speaker mode or in grid mode. And so you're able to uh, share that information with students. Hi, how you doing? I'm me and I'm sharing with you. Then we, when you were done, presumably the instructor would ask you to mute your mic, mute your camera, and then we move on to the next student. 
At the bottom center of the screen, you have the uh, opportunity to look at my status and settings. Uh, and here, when you click on this, up pops the ability to indicate if you are uh, happy, surprised, sad, confused, want needed to go faster, slower. Uh, when you click on any one of these, the icon shows up next to your image so you know that you have it up and running. And over in the chat area, which we haven't talked about yet, it would also show up next to your name. After 30 seconds, that will go away, and so you don't have to worry about clearing it. If you select, select the away status, you have to leave the room, then others see a small clock by your image, and it stays there until you come back to the room and indicate that you're back, at which time it goes away. Another thing you might need to do is to get your professor's attention so you can raise your hand, clicking on the raise hand icon. You can see here that your hand is raised. Pop-up occurs in your professor's screen to show that you've uh, raised your hand and your professor can call on you. Your professor can, in fact, lower your hand for you. <laughs> or uh, you can, having raised your hand, you can also lower it. One of the things we might also have been asked to do is to update our image. We can do that by clicking on My Status and Settings and then clicking on My Settings, that pops up the My Settings window. Or we can do it, as we talked about before, by going to the Collaborate panel, and then clicking on Edit next to your name. Then you can either upload a picture, or you can capture a photo from the camera, whichever works better for you. Here we'll take a picture from the camera, but you could just as easily have uploaded an image that you already had. So once you save it, this becomes the image that everyone sees for you, for your profile. Your instructor has the ability to poll the class at large, in which case, of course, you would see that poll. And so when the poll is shared, you get the opportunity to see it, as do all other students in the class. According to CNBC, what was the world's most valuable brand in 2019? You can figure out what it might be. Any ideas? I'll go for Amazon. I don't know what everybody else We'll think about the possible answer, but uh, presently the instructor can share that information with us uh, when the poll is done, and we can see what the responses were. One person didn't respond, one guessed Apple, two felt it was Amazon, uh, and in fact, it was Amazon. So that is an option that might occur within your session. The instructor might also engage you by chatting with you. The instructor might ask you, what's your favorite hobby? and ask you to respond by chatting. To chat, which we touched on briefly before, you would click on the Open Collaborate panel. You would click on Chat if it isn't up. You would respond with what your favorite hobby is. And of course, others in the room would do the same. And as those responses come in, we can see it in the Attendee panel. And our instructor can see it as well. We also have the option within the Collaborate room to work collaboratively, hence the name, with our professor. So the professor might ask us to provide a caption for the image that he has shared. We do this with the control panel up here where we can select an object, point to an object, write on an object, draw a shape on an object, or provide text on an object in any of a variety of colors. So we would select the color we want and put in our particular text answer. And everyone in the course would see our response. And of course, other people in the class would also respond. And we would get to see what they were thinking this particular uh, response should have been. So in Collaborate, we can be asked to share text we might be asked to draw something, to circle something. So where is the collar? We can do that as well by uh, selecting the pencil. We can point to it. This is the collar here. <laughs> and uh, so we have a variety of choices in terms of collaborating with the instructor. 
The instructor could then also do something similar to this, asking us to circle the differences that we find in this image. And we can respond in an appropriate way by doing that. So I see a difference here in the butterfly. I see a difference in this drawing on the ground. I see that this person uh, is not in the other image. They're in this image. So as I share these out, the instructor and my other classmates can see this as well. Depending on the purpose of the course, our instructor might have us work with other individuals in other students in the room in what are called breakout groups. And so uh, if we're put into a great breakout group, we would see starting breakout groups and then the group room that we were in with whoever we were in uh, with before sending us off to a room, the instructor would arguably tell us what to do <laughs> in that room. In this case, there are going to be three groups. Group one is going to deal with the question of what has surprised you the most so far. Group two is going to deal with the issue of what have you liked best so far. And group three is going to deal with the issue of what have you disliked the most so far. And the instructor has taken note for us, when you're finished with the discussion, be sure to save your whiteboard work, telling us we should be working on a whiteboard in the, in the group, by taking a screenshot of it. Uh, for example, you can do control print screen so that you can share it with the class. So that's a warning. Also, the instructor would have to let us know how long we're in the breakout room or come and get us uh, so that we come back to the main room at an appropriate time. So having shared that information with us, the instructor might put us into our breakout groups. So we see that we are starting a breakout uh, group. We see that we're in group number one, and hopefully we took good notes on what's going on so that we know that what group number one was supposed to be working on or talking about. So we can use the Collaborate panel to talk to our other student. So we can use the mic on or off, uh, or we can chat with the other student in our room. And importantly, for our purpose, we can share a whiteboard with our other student in the room. And uh, we can both work on the ideas that we want to share back to the class. So at the end of the time period, of course, what would happen is we would then want to take an image of this. There are a variety of ways of doing that, but we can do it through using the control print screen option. And we might just want to cut and paste that into a PowerPoint slide that we can save and then share later on with the class when asked. All right, so now the instructor brings us back into our in, back into the main room. That takes a minute. And once we're back into the main room, we're able to follow the instructions and we can share them with other students in the room. Well, we've seen a variety of ways that you can interact with the Collaborate Classroom. Your professor may use it in just a more traditional uh, lecturing mode. So, so you would see your professor, you would be able to uh, listen to what he or she had to say, and then your professor would share out information with you. For example, Here's a uh, PDF file Prof wants you to take a look at. An interesting thing as you look at the PDF file, which the Prof is controlling, is that the information is pretty hard to see. And so you have the option on your screen of clicking on the view controls, where you can zoom into something that's being shared in Collaborate to see it more clearly, zoom out, go to what it calls best fit, go to actual size of the object. And so your professor might say to you, let's take a look at the adoption level and barriers, and let's talk about that a little bit. And you would want to zoom in to see what's going on. Important to know is that as your professor moves in Collaborate to the next slide or the one after that, your view does not automatically zoom back out. And so you might have to zoom out to see what the professor is talking about with you. Another way that the prof might choose to share information is not by using the Collaborate Share File screen, but rather by sharing his or her application screen. That's to say his or her actual computer screen. 
So when the prof goes to do that, you get this odd view that we call the hall of mirrors view until the prof pulls up the thing that he or she wants to share with you. And now we see we're in a PowerPoint slideshow. We still have the option of zooming in and out on that slideshow, but we no longer have the ability to write on it because it's no longer a collaborate object. It is a PowerPoint slideshow. So the prof may go through material, uh, may point out information to us, uh, how to join the session, how to join from the browser, how to set your mic settings, etc. You might still be invited to comment, but you can't actually write on this particular file. So there are various ways that the prof has of sharing information with you in an actual class, depending on the purpose of that class. The next thing we might need to know is how to exit the room. So we click on what's called the hamburger menu. It's called the sessions menu. We click on that and we leave the session. We can either choose or not choose to answer the optional quality. And that takes us back to the sessions page. If our class has been recorded and we want to see it, or if we were told to look at a recording, you find that from the Blackboard Collaborate Sessions page. Left clicking on the hamburger menu at the left brings up recordings, and we would just have to go through find the particular recording that we were was appropriate for us, looking at the date or whatever room we're told to look at, and we can choose to watch that video as it's been recorded. All right, so that then is the essence of Blackboard Collaborate. Hopefully you found it helpful. Thank you.